evening. It's Monday, April 10th, 2017. Welcome to your Greeley Evans School Board meeting. This meeting will now come to order. Will you join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call, Ms. Crane. Mr. DeWitt. Present. Mr. Hayfley. Present. Mr. Hall. Present. Mr. Lidiak. Mr. Lidiak is excused this evening. Ms. Pappas. Present. Dr. Richard. Present. Ms. Solis. Present. Six members present. Thank you. First item uh, is the Board of Education uh, President announcements. And uh, the announcement I'd like to share this evening was uh, referring back to an event we, some of us shared uh, earlier today. We have three key words that um, kind of reflect our school district, engage, empower, and inspire. And those words were certainly reflected as the school district received a check for um, a, a good deal of money uh, from the Curtis Strong Foundation through the NCMC Foundation. And District 6 will put those monies to work in uh, programs and equipment for students with low or no vision and also for a vision screening for every student in the school district. So we are indeed grateful and uh, inspired by that kind of gift. Uh, the next item is the hearing of persons desiring to speak before the Board of Education. I don't believe we had any one register an interest in that. So we'll move on to the work session report. Uh, we just spent a little bit of time working on uh, some uh, subjects upstairs. And Ms. Crane, will you give us a review of that, please? Momentarily, sorry. Can we come back to this item? Yeah, please? absolutely. Thank we you. have some computer things going on. Oh. Dr. Pilch, do you mind? Oh, 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 are you? I'm back. Are you set now? OK, <laughs> great. Thank you. Board of Education President Roger DeWitt began the work session with open comments and updates from the board members. Ms. Pappas provided an update on the work of the Community Engagement Planning Committee. Mr. DeWitt reviewed the upcoming events and the graduation schedule. Assistant Superintendent for Academic Achievement, Dr. Stacy Dattery, provided information on the District Unified Improvement Plan. Board members asked questions and received responses from the superintendent and district leadership. Dr. Pilch briefly spoke about community engagement, and that concluded the work session. Thank you, ma'am. The next item is, Dr. Pilch, the superintendent's report, if you're ready. Well, I'm, I am. I'm as ready as I'm going to be. It seems our technology has failed us this evening. Oh, okay. But, we, but um, I think I can do this I, from memory. So the first thing I wanna, <laughs> want to uh, talk about is an announcement and a reminder for those of you who have registered for the Success Foundation breakfast tomorrow morning. The doors will open at 6.30 a.m. at Northridge High School. The breakfast goes quickly from 7 a.m. to 8 a.m. It's an opportun opportunity to come out, learn more about our school district foundation, the Success Foundation, and an opportunity to write a little check to benefit District 6. So that's tomorrow morning for those of you who have registered to come. We look forward to seeing you there. Also, I wanted to remind folks that Thursday evening, we have an opportunity to attend a benefit concert for our school kickoff event. Friday evening, pardon, see, I don't have notes, but they're helping me here. Friday evening, uh, we have a benefit concert for our school kickoff event. This is the event that we hold at Island Grove each fall, where we're able to give every student a backpack and school supplies and lots of other materials necessary to get school started. This is sponsored by the Greeley Stampede Committee, so all of the proceeds will go to backpacks. The concert is at Greeley Central High School, 7 p.m. Friday evening. You can get tickets through our district website if you're interested in purchasing tickets. So the third thing I want to share is that you all may notice that the seat here next to me is empty um, again uh, for, for another board meeting. And I, I wanted to share with everyone that, that our colleague and friend, Doug Lidiak, was in an accident just a little over a week ago paragliding. He's an avid paraglider um, and really has, has sailed all over the world in his paragliding. And fortunately, um, although the accident was serious, um, he is recovering and, and a full recovery is expected. But I expect that Mr. Lidiak won't be with us for a while um, as he is still in the hospital in Denver and um, underwent surgery last week, pretty extensive surgery last week. And um, 
we look forward to, to when he'll be able to be back and join us. But I know that those of you who might have watched our meetings know that when Mr. Lydiak, Lydiak is off sailing, literally, um, elsewhere, that he typically comes in via Skype and he won't be joining us for a while, I don't think. So I know our thoughts go out to him and, and we're keeping him in our hearts as he continues to heal down in Denver. So I just wanted to share that in, in case there are folks wondering why the chair is empty next to me again tonight. Thanks, Dr. Pilch. Appreciate that. Well, the next item is the approval of the agenda, and I'd be glad to accept a motion uh, at this time for that motion. I move that the Board of Education of Weld County School District 6 approve the agenda as written. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Comment? Roll call, Ms. Crane. Mr. DeWitt? Aye. Mr. Hall? Aye. Mr. Hafley? Aye. Dr. Richard? Aye. Ms. Pappas? Aye. Ms. Solis? Aye. Motion carries 6 0. Thank you, ma'am. The next item is the consent agenda, and I'll now accept a motion uh, for the consent agenda. I move that we accept the uh, consent agenda and authorize the, uh, our president and vice president to sign all necessary contracts. Second. Thank you both. Well, Discussion? You can Roll call, Ms. Crane. Mr. DeWitt. Aye. Mr. Hall. Aye. Mr. Hafley. Aye. Ms. Pappas. Aye. Dr. Richard. Aye. Mrs. Solis. Aye. Motion carries 6-0. Next item under special items is project teacher fine. Dr. Pilch, are you ready to take this one on? Yeah, I just want y'all to know I'm flying blind over here. Oh, okay, <laughs> great. Oh, well, you're doing I, great so It seems so far. I have no internet service. Okay. Uh, and you know, this is part of being in a very old building. Uh, our district technology services folks were here today, worked for several hours on our internet here in the building, and it seems that um, we're, we're glitching down again, and so it, it's just part of being a, in an old facility. So um, I see that Ms. Overton, our Assistant Superintendent in Human Resources, has made her way to the podium. She's going to tell us a little bit about Project Teacher Find, and then we have the privilege of honoring two scholarship recipients this evening. This is so important to us because this means we have high school graduates who are going on to be teachers. That, that is fabulous and I am here to tell you both you have a wonderful career ahead of you. you you have a wonderful wonderful career that will give as much back to you as you give to it so That's Ms. Right. Overton I'm gonna turn it over to you now thank you dr. Pilch good evening president DeWitt and members of our board and dr. Pilch of course I'm here tonight to introduce and recognize two amazing young women who are recipients of the project teacher find scholarship tonight one of them could not be with us because she's out of out of state but we do have Yasmin Hernandez with us tonight, so we're going to celebrate with her. I'll give you a little bit of information about the other recipient, and then we'll certainly recognize her at the school. So, Mr. DeWitt, would you please help me recognize Yasmin? So, Project Teachers Find is, a part, is part of our Innovation 2020 strategic plan, and it's also a collaborative grow-your-own effort between UNC and District 6 to identify and recruit high school teachers, high school students, who aspire to be teachers in the district. The scholarship provides funding each year to District 6 and um, also looks for any candidates that they can um, recruit to be part of our teacher candidates for um, UNC. High school students are recommended by their counselors. Their applications <coughs> are screened by a scholarship committee um, composed of District 6 human resources, counselors, and um, University of New Mexico, New Mexico, University of Northern Colorado faculty. These students have worked hard throughout high school and will give just as much effort in college. We look forward to them shaping the lives of District 6 students in the future. So Yasmin Hernandez is with us. Why don't you come up here and stand? She's a senior at Greeley Central High School. She's involved with Green Cats, LULAC, Resist, and plays on the girls' soccer team as a goalkeeper. She loves doing outdoor activities such as bike riding and walks at the park and any sort of physical activity. She, gets, she, stay, um, she says getting involved in things outside of her comfort zone are things she enjoys because it helps her build character by shaping who she is. This fall, she will be attending the University of Northern Colorado, where she plans to major in 
elementary education in hopes of one day teaching second or fifth grade. Now, okay. although these grades would be ideal for her, she, it, any grade level in elementary will be acceptable because she is flexible. <laughs> <laughs> Yasmin's goal as a future educator is to serve as a leading example for her students by making a difference in their personal and academic lives. <clears throat> All right, why don't you come stand right out there. How's your comfort zone? <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations. Our second candidate or recipient is Kiana Atuna from Northridge High School. And she's, well, although, she, although she's not able to be here, we're going to go over to her school. And I just want to give you a couple words about her to celebrate her as well. Um, she's a senior at Northridge High School. And outside of school, she enjoys traveling, playing sports, and spending time with her friends and her family. Throughout her high school career, she's experienced great success in her academics, her extracurricular involvement. She currently holds holds a 4.16 GPA and is ranked second in her class. Through her hard work and dedication, she will graduate with 29 college credits and enter college as a sophomore. At Northridge, she's involved in student council, national honor society, link crew, varsity volleyball, and varsity soccer. She spends a great amount of time giving back to her community, volunteering for the health care program with children with special needs, she will be graduating in a few months and is excited to attend the University of Northern Colorado to study biology and pursue a career <coughs> teaching either elementary or high school. She still hasn't decided. <laughs> so thank you so much, Yasmin, for joining us tonight and her family who's here with her. We wish you success as you continue, you continue your education and we look forward to you, to bringing you on board with us as an employee and um, a District 6 team member in the future. Well, Ms. Hernandez, there are some of us here are, who are very enthused about UNC and encourage you <laughs> thoroughly about that. Um, but we also know that you may have some homework to do. And while the next part of this meeting will be fabulous, <laughs> you may want to just take your family and, and uh, move on. <laughs> Thank you and congratulations. Thank you. Good job, Mom. <laughs> Great job. The next item is the District Unified Improvement Plan. Dr. Pilch, how are we doing on, uh, on getting information from the depths? You know, I am nothing if not prepared, uh, regardless of my internet connection at this moment. All right. <laughs> um, so I, you know, I, Dr. Dattery has come to the podium here. We spent, oh gosh, an hour and a half in our work session tonight discussing our District Unified Improvement Plan. And so the detail of that discussion occurred in the work session. Dr. Dattery is just going to give a brief overview here tonight, and then you all will be asked to take action on that, um, as it is a, a, is a state requirement for our Board of Education to approve our Unified Improvement Plan. Well, now that we know that we've, the show will go on, let me go ahead and uh, accept a motion on this particular item. I move that the Board of Education of Weld County School District 6 approve the District Improvement Plan as presented. Second. Moved and seconded. <clears throat> Thank you very much. Doctor? Well, thank you, President DeWitt, Superintendent Pilch, and members of the board. Tonight, I do bring to you the District Unified Improvement Plan as an action item for your consideration. The District UIP, as we call it, uh, is in alignment with the requirements set forth by the State of Colorado within the District Performance Framework rating of accredited with an improvement plan. So as such, the District UIP brought before you tonight includes the action plan associated with our identified performance challenge. The priority performance challenge identified in the UIP and found in your board packet centers around supporting our students who are learning English as a second language to attain proficiency at the state expectations in English language arts and in math 
and to support them in achieving English language proficiency at the expected rate as set forth by the state of Colorado. While we have made some progress as a district in this area over the past few years, we believe that the reasons we are not making more significant growth is due to three key areas. One is due to the lack of district-wide English language development approach. A second is a lack of identified core educator com capacities that support our teachers with the skills and the depth of knowledge that they need in order to support all of our students in this area. And a third is due to the lack of that effective program models district-wide that will really support best practice for our students who are learning English as a second language. Therefore, there were three major improvement strategies identified to address these root causes. First, it is to adopt a vision and a master plan for effective EL instruction across our district. The second is to examine current practices and programs, and then explore the ways in which we will more effectively design and implement quality programs and models that will support our students who are learning a second language. And finally, to develop and implement comprehensive and sustained professional learning systems for cohorts of teachers and, and administrators. The complete set of action steps associated with these improvement strategies are in your board packet, and those are what we reviewed more in-depthly in our work session. As I shared with you earlier, this is a multi-year plan reflecting two years of improvement strategies and action steps, both within this current school year and those that we will take action on next year. This year, the district UIP is inclusive of the English Language Development Audit and Action Plan that was developed this year in consultation with WestEd and our district EL action team. They have met multiple times throughout the year to better understand our challenges in achievement with our students who are learning English as a second language and then create the strategies and action steps that we believe will further the achievement for these students. In addition, our district accountability committee met for an evening to examine the trend data and determine strategies that would be most helpful to pursue as we wrote our district UIP to support student learning. So upon your approval, the District Unified Improvement Plan will then be sent to the Colorado Department of Education to be placed on School View, which is their electronic dashboard for public display. So, and I thank you tonight for your earlier uh, conversation and for your consideration this evening of the District Unified Improvement Plan. So thank you. Based on our, uh, our work together earlier in this evening, are there questions or comments from board members? Uh, Ms. Pappas. Um, I just want to say that we know that our English language learners come to us with unique experiences, with cultural backgrounds, with language, and I just want to let you know how much I appreciate the intentionality behind this plan and the fact that every student will have um, access to grade level content and just the intentional and extensive support in um, providing meaningful and authentic educational experiences. So thank you. Other comments? One of the things that a couple of us were discussing on our way down was the fact that we've heard Unified Improvement Plan a couple of times in our short careers as board members. And, uh, and there's quite a bit of excitement in the room about the fact that this one has got uh, qu quite a bit of energy behind it mm -hmm. and actually um, stands as a, as a kind of a flag behind which we can all kind of march toward improving the district. So we're very excited and we do want to thank everyone involved in, in the work. There, was, there were quite a few team members, and if you don't mind uh, sharing that, uh, that thanks from the board in anticipation of all the hard work that is going to be continuing. Thank Dr. You. Pilch. Thank you, Mr. DeWitt. I just want to restate that this plan is a part of our district strategic plan, our Innovation 2020. And, and this is where I, I think what you saw tonight and why you are seeing such a robust and extensive and really meaningful plan 
is because of the strategic planning work that we have done. And this, this is the result of our action planning work out of our strategic plan. And our staff has been highly engaged in this, the classroom teachers who were a part of the committee as well as administrators. So I couldn't be more proud to bring this to you. And I truly believe we're going to see it make, make a big difference in District 6 in terms of student achievement. So thank you for your support. Well, let's just count that support, shall we? Um, <laughs> no. Yikes. Roll, <laughs> roll call, Ms. Crane. <laughs> Mr. DeWitt? Aye. Mr. Hall? Aye. Mr. Hafley? Aye. Ms. Pappas? Aye. Dr. Richard? Aye. Ms. Solis? Aye. Motion carries 6 0. Support indeed, Thank Doctor. You. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Thank you. The next item, Mr. Pilch, is the updated 2017 18 district calendar. And we've done a few things with this calendar, and then we've brought it up to date with some changes for our own good. So if you don't mind highlighting that for us. Thank you, Mr. DeWitt. So as you said that we'd already done some work with this, a few months ago you all approved a two-year calendar for District 6, so a 17-18 um, school year calendar and an 18-19 school year calendar. We are already bringing that to you for a revision tonight uh, because we've been doing some work around our school bell times and around our release times, and we have have actually shifted the district away from those Monday afternoon release times for professional development and we're moving to full day professional development learning times for our teachers system wide. Our high schools have been doing that for a couple of years now and, and after some extensive study this year we've decided to move the entire system in that direction. It actually allows us to reallocate um, some dollars from the dollars we were spending each day on those early release. Um, we won't be running buses, for example, on those full days of release. So we are able to reallocate some dollars there. Um, so it's a little bit of a savings for us. But most importantly, those full day PDs are about going more um, going more in depth with our staff. So this English language learner plan that you all just learned about tonight, that's going to require some more in-depth work with our teachers rather than really just hitting them for an hour and a half or so each week. They'll still have time built into their week for, for building professional learning each week if, if the building chooses to design it that way. Um, but what you see before you is a new calendar for the next two school years with those professional development days built in. Thanks, Dr. Um, I'd be glad to accept a motion on this before we chat about it further. I move that the Board of Education of Well <coughs> County School District 6 approve the 2017-18 school year calendar as presented. Second. Moved and seconded. Thank you. Um, comments or questions? We did have a chance to chat about this upstairs earlier. Um, this does reflect our best guess at um, this, at two years from now and our, our dedication toward this this next year. Yes, and we're hoping that it will allow our staff as well as our families to plan and put plans in place over the next couple of years in terms of their own travel. Thank you. Other comments from board members? Dr. Richard. Uh, just some questions about how we're working with our partners in the community to let them know about uh, this change, mm -hmm. um, including the after-school programs, but also I'm wondering where we stand with nutrition services mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and that. Those are great questions. Uh, so we actually, on um, these days, we plan to still bring in our staff, like our nutrition services staff. This is a great opportunity for us to do training with them. So we're, we're still planning to bring those folks in. It's, uh, we, will, we will work to determine if we provide any meetings meals on those days. For example, we've been talking about our food truck. We've been talking about providing food at a couple of different sites so that families still have access to lunch on those days. So those are conversations that we're still having right now. And, and I will keep you updated as we work through those plans. I will tell you that the Boys and Girls Club is thrilled about this. They love the opportunity of, of possibly filling those clubhouses on these Mondays. You know, those clubhouses typically sit empty all day long on school days um, during the school year. So, uh, you know, they're excited to work with us on this and then we know there's more work we need to do once the calendar is approved we know there's more work we need to do with with daycare providers and those kinds of things but you know the big deal is to really get this information out in the community the feedback from parents has been um, that for the most part that they appreciate the full day rather than trying to make arrangements every Monday uh, for just that early release that the full day allows them to plan with the family and having all of their children out at the same time. So those are full days of release 
for all of our students K through 12. I think you know that that helps families as well. We do understand there's a little bit of a burden on families in that fa there are families who will have to find full day child care um, who have not had to do that in the past on these days and so uh, you know we we understand that and and we we appreciate it and yet we feel like for financial reasons as well as the professional development reasons we we needed to move in this direction. Well, and just to follow up, it also provides families an opportunity to maybe schedule doctor or dentist appointments Absolutely. on those full day Mondays, <laughs> and uh, that means that their children are in school during the rest of the week. <coughs> yeah, absolutely. Well, I'm seeing no other comments on the board here, so uh, the, um, it's a roll call, please. Ms. Crane? Mr. DeWitt? Aye. Mr. Hall? Aye. Mr. Hayfley? Aye. Ms. Pappas? Aye. Dr. Richard? Aye. Ms. Solis? Aye. Motion carries 6-0. Well, thank you very much. And thanks to staff for living through a, a little loss of uh, connectivity. This concludes our board meeting tonight. This uh, meeting is adjourned. Thank you. Thank you very much. So close. I, I, I changed